While we were in Boston, we not only got to tour Fenway Park, but we also got to see a baseball game there. In this video, we'll show you snippets from our tour as well as highlights from the Red Sox vs. Yankees game. Going to Fenway Park has always been on my bucket list because I come from a long line of Red Sox fans. My father, grandfather, great-grandfather. Growing up, my father would tell me stories about his trips to Fenway and his favorite players from back in the day. So in a way, going to Fenway sort of felt like a pilgrimage to me. Tours of the park begin at the team store, which has any and all Red Sox paraphernalia you could imagine. When the tour began, our first impression was that the park was much smaller than we imagined. Our tour guide wasted no time explaining that Fenway is the smallest ballpark in the MLB. We got to sit in the Green Monster, which is the big green wall in left field. The wall used to be covered in advertisements until 1947. Then it was all painted green and fans nicknamed it the Green Monster. We got to go into the press box and see one of the best views of the field. The red seat marks the longest home run ever seen at Fenway, seat 21 and row 37 of section 42. After the tour, you're taken to a small exhibit with artifacts that represent the park's history. It even has Babe Ruth's old bat and glove. Touring the park versus attending a game there is night and day. The park was so lively. We were lucky enough to get tickets to see the Red Sox play the Yankees, and we were super excited to see this historic rivalry in person. Before the game, there was a ceremony to celebrate the retirement of famous Red Sox player Justin Pedroia. After knee injury, Pedroia planned to return to baseball, but his surgery was delayed due to the pandemic. He ultimately decided to retire in February of 2021. Fans, players, managers, and even the Red Sox owners were there to celebrate him. During the ceremony, Pedroia was inducted into the Red Sox Hall of Fame and some of his former teammates were there to honor him. First off, I want to thank John Henry and all the owners for, for making me a Red Sox my whole career. Pedroia even threw out the ceremonial first pitch of the game. Then, former professional wrestler Ric Flair randomly came out to present Pedroia with his championship belt. We were admittedly super confused by this. We're assuming Pedroia is a big Ric Flair fan, but we honestly have no clue.
Then it was game time. We knew the Red Sox-Yankees rivalry was huge, but we didn't understand how deep it was until the game began. No matter what a Yankees player or fan did, Red Sox fans would boo them. It was actually hilarious. We learned during our tour that a guy comes out behind the green monster to manually update the scores during commercial breaks. The job is highly coveted and there's something like a 10 year wait list to have that job. The Red Sox-Yankees rivalry runs so deep that they even booed this poor couple's proposal as soon as they realized they were Yankees fans. There's a tradition at Fenway of singing Sweet Caroline during a game. It started when an employee in charge of ballpark music played Sweet Caroline because she knew that a park employee just had a baby named Caroline. The song is now played at every Red Sox game just before the bottom of the eighth inning. It was a perfect night, complete with a Red Sox win. We slowly made our way back to our hotel and are immensely grateful we got to cross us off of our bucket list. Go Sox!